What if the price of your career meant missing out on seeing your children grow up? Could the life you want exist on the other side of the world? In 2010, that was the question faced by the Peyton family. One year on, we've caught up with them to see if they found their answer. Just the thought of leaving her mum was too much for Sharon Peyton. She basically broke down and I was just saying things like she's never, she feels that she's never going to see us again. But husband Alan was desperate to change his life around and get his priorities straight. Back home I work roughly 90 hours a week, Okay. so I'm not, uh, I'm looking to reduce that. Ahead was a week that would show the patents just how tough leaving would be. <laughs> Australia was Alan's dream, but he'd have to convince the rest of his family to emigrate. In 2010, the Paytons faced a massive choice, whether to swap their home in the UK for a new start in Australia. We gave them one week to experience the reality of living down under. But what's happened since we last met them? Tree surgeon Alan Payton, his wife Sharon and their three girls, Chantelle, Demi and Imogen, lived in Carmarthenshire in South Wales. Sharon had always lived nearby, but Alan, who was originally from Scotland, wanted to move. He was tired of putting his business ahead of his family. The stress is unbelievable. It's not at the, at the end of the day now. It's not worth it. I've been, you know, seven years at it now, and that's seven years I've lost of my kids growing up, and nobody will give me that back. But it wasn't just the children who felt abandoned. It feels some of the time like I'm a single parent basically, and we just want to bring us all together. And I don't think that if we do stay in the UK, it's not going to be possible. They needed to discover if there really was something else out there for them. We're getting set in this rut. We're all just going to do our own little things, you know? And you imagine that's what we're all going to be like. And we're going to be so distant if we carry on like this. Basically, I'd like to you know, get over to Australia and sample what their life's all about. They'd been planning this trip for a while, and the pressure was on to make sure they made the right decision. Well, as long as you listen to my opinions and we discuss I and, your we, opinions, and we, but we I'm talk not, and we weigh up the pros and we weigh up the cons. I'm not going through the stress of what I go through to keep this house. No, and I don't want because to Because all this house stress. is to me is something to get my head down at night there as I work. We are the family, us yeah. five. It's all about us at, you know, at, this, at this time now. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to weigh up. Is it going to be a good start for them because it's going to make them happy, they're going to be healthy, but they will miss my mum and dad. And I just don't know how we'll be able to, to do that. Eldest daughter Chantelle struggled to even imagine leaving. I think there's still some questions of whether I'm going to go or not. And sometimes I want to go, but sometimes I don't. I'll probably make some new friends and... But for Sharon, separation from one person in particular was hard to bear. Where have you been today? I've been so close to my mum. Um, and when I first told her about the idea of moving to Australia, she basically broke down and... <laughs> And was just saying things like she's never, she feels that she's never going to see us again. Um, so emotionally, that's hard. Um, so I'm thinking to myself that me and the girls are not going to see, see them again. They're not going to be brought up with their grandparents. Um, so emotionally, that, that's, that's a big hit, that's a big issue. <laughs> With so much riding on their trial week, we decided that Adelaide would suit the Paytons. With plenty of parks and green areas all over the city, there would be lots of work for Alan. And Adelaide's small town feel would have made it easier for Sharon to settle here. After an exhausting journey, the Payton family had travelled 10,000 miles to try out a new life on the other side of the world. 
It should have taken just under a day to get there, but with delays, they spent 33 exhausting hours in transit. Last I slept, well, I got up 5 a.m. Saturday morning, so it's about 47 hours now. It's the longest I spent with the kids in a long time. And there was a lot of uncertainty about the week ahead. Thinking of me moving here makes me sad thinking of my friends back home. We need to prove to her that what's out there to offer for her. The only way to prove that, though, is if we can prove that you like it. I don't want to put it on a pedestal. I want to be a bit more realistic about it. So we'll just wait and see what the next few days show. After their mammoth journey to Australia, it was a relatively short drive to their rental home. But all that travelling had taken its toll on certain members of the family. They stayed in a four-bedroom house in McLaren Vale with a big living space and views over the fields beyond. Wow. It was just the kind of start Alan had wanted for their week. I know, I say everywhere you look, you've got just miles and miles of it. But there were some differences of opinion. It's very, very spacious, but I'm still quite... Um, still got my own individual rooms in mind at the moment. No, I prefer... Uh, you prefer plan. this, do you? Open plan will bring us together. Uh, can play what do you think, Imogen? Well you, like. really you. you just want a bed, you do, don't you? <laughs> Have you found one? Oh, wow! I'm on the top! <laughs> Love your fan up there, girl? Yeah! yeah? We're not going to have arguments for sleeping up there now, are we? No! Oh. <laughs> I think so. Outside, they were reminded of why they wanted to move. Girls, yeah. can you see what's over there? Mm. Tree house. And the swing. With a swing on it. Can we go on the tree house? Yeah. They wanted the girls to have a more outdoor lifestyle and, most importantly, they all needed more time together as a family. Feel a bit dull. Yeah. See, they don't do this at all, do they? No. But there was a big emotional hurdle they had to get over first. Knowing that my mum's just not round the corner or a phone call away even. I'm torn at the moment. I'm torn. Like I say, I want to come out here for this, um, but then I'd be on my own. Oh, it's really it's frightening to know that I could do it. But, it, you know, it's pos it is possible. Back in the UK, the Paintons lived in a large 16-roomed home in Carmarthenshire in South Wales. Sharon fell in love with the house the moment she saw it, and they had worked hard to make it their own. It was an impressive building with four reception rooms, a large bedroom each for the girls, and even a self-contained flat on the ground floor. With fantastic countryside nearby and a playground for the children, they tried to live the outdoor life, but the weather was a real problem. They had £250,000 to spend, but it would have taken something really special in Australia to make them even consider leaving their home. The first house was in the suburb of Woodcroft. With four bedrooms and plenty of outdoor space, it was on the market for £250,000, right at the top of their budget. Nice big windows. I mean, the room's not a bad size. But you're coming um, straight in the front door. Really into your sitting area, aren't into you? Into your sitting area. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, usually I like the, the kitchen dining room to be together. Their home in South Wales was a tough act to follow, and this house wasn't winning them over. Having enough room for guests was a priority. If we get visitors, you know, yeah, yeah. over. Well, I haven't seen nothing yet for them. No. It'd be a squeeze, wouldn't it? It would be. Yeah. It would be tight. But it was outdoor living they'd come in search of. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. nice. You wanted a pool, eh? Yeah. Get us all fun in there, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. It might have had a pool, but did it sway them towards leaving their home on the other side of the world? You know, it's, it's this, far, this far too small. Me we don't to... need the size house we have, but this, this is too small, too small for us. This wouldn't convince me to, yeah. to give it up. 
Without the space they were used to, even Alan was struggling to see the dream. He needed far more from the next two properties. The second house was in Old Rinella, only 14 minutes from the city centre. It was on the market for £240,000 and would have given them five bedrooms and plenty of outside space complete with a pool. First impressions were key. This is quite nice. I like the floor. Nice floor, yeah. It's, it's big enough. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not small and... No, I quite don't. So far, so good. Huh? Yeah. Should we go and see what else is here? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Let's go then. Oh, oh, this is quite nice. Yeah. Quite big. Good size, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You like this wall? Could you cover it up? If... Oh, I knew something like that would come <laughs> along. I've always got to do something, Chantelle, haven't I? Never leaves me alone. Keeps you busy. <laughs> and Alan would have another job to do, convincing Imogen this was the house for her. I'm not going to sleep in this bedroom. You're not going to sleep in here? Why? Why? You don't like this one, do you? No. No? It is a bit smaller than the one she's got back home, isn't it? Right. It started off good, but I'm feeling it's going down a bit now. Australian houses weren't winning over Sharon or Alan. I don't know. If I'm giving up my house, I want to walk in. I think I can see myself here and I like it and feel homely in it. And I don't know, the, the, these two properties haven't done that for me. Everything hinged on the last house. Set on Selix Beach, it offered something very different. The sea, 500 metres from their front door. At £260,000, it would have stretched their budget, but with good-sized bedrooms and a large outdoor area, could this house turn things around? My first impression here, Alan, as well. Upstairs, it got even better. Oh, wow. <gasps> wow, this is, this is it, this isn't is it? This is nice, huh? It's really, it's beautiful, isn't it? really, it's really You've nice. got a workspace, you've got breakfast bar, modern kitchen. Yeah. The living area had everything they wanted, but what about the rest of the house? I like this. A good size too, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, this is nice. The view you've got there. You might have sitting huh? out here in the evenings with a glass of wine. Yeah, look at that. Huh? That's gorgeous. Look at the sea. Uh, nice living and having that view all the time. Every morning, waking up to this. Yeah. Huh? That just left the girls. Were they going to be happy with their bedrooms? Oh, this is nice. This is my room. Oh, mine. <laughs> mine. Mine. <laughs> Should we go and have a look outside then, girls? Yeah. A hot tub. Oh, wow. And it seems Sharon was coming round to the idea of living in Australia. This one has pushed a couple of buttons for me, I think. Could potentially be in our, our yeah. price range. It, it is a possible, it is within our reach, I yeah. at the moment, so it wouldn't be stretching the budget too much. They might have been able to afford this house, but it could have meant they would struggle to enjoy the lifestyle they wanted. There was a lot to weigh up. The Peyton family had seen three very different homes. Besides, the first two was a disappointment. But the last house won them over with its attractive living space and views. But how did it compare to their family home in Wales? When it came to voting, did they go for Australia or the UK? Based on the properties that we've seen in Australia today, our vote is going to be Australia. Australia. But it was a hard decision to make. I think I might be a bit sad to leave a house back home. Sorry. What's wrong with you? Huh? What's wrong? Okay. <laughs> we are crying now, are we? I don't think this would be so emotional. Just the thought of leaving South Wales was heartbreaking. The Paytons were starting to realise the true cost of moving. They'd crossed the world to get here, but they still had a long way to go to be sure moving was right. Back in the UK, Alan had his own tree surgery business. It was something he was very proud of, but building it up had taken its toll on the rest of his life. Here in the UK, my dream always was to run my own business, and now I've done it, you know, 
I, I leave here in the morning in darkness. I come home in darkness. And I never see the kids, I don't see the house. Whether they moved to Australia or not, Alan was determined to change his life. So he was considering a change of direction in working for somebody else. This could have had a big impact on his wages, so he needed to find out if he would earn enough to support his family. We arranged for him to meet with a local tree surgeon to get a taste of working in Australia. Alan wanted to make sure his skills would be in demand. One thing I have noticed here is there are a lot of trees. So there must be plenty of work here then. Yes, there is. There is never going to be short of it. There's uh, plenty of work. You can work uh, more than 50 hours uh, a week if, you, if you'd like to. Yeah, well, I'm uh, back home. I work roughly 90 hours a week. OK. So I'm not, uh, I'm looking to reduce that. <laughs> no worries. A 40-hour week was a result Alan dreamt of, but he needed to be sure he'd be happy working for someone else. Sharon was a qualified nurse, but she wouldn't work until Chantel, Demi and Imogen had settled. To see how they would fit in, they went to try out one of their favourite hobbies, dancing. As they knew that leaving friends would be difficult, it was vital they felt they'd all be able to make new ones down under. I think they're doing quite well, actually. They seem to be in oh, jail. Yeah. They're really well. Yeah. Imogen's Especially, got such yeah, a nice grin on her face. <laughs> She's loving every minute of it. Sharon's new friend Kylie was a great sounding board for her concerns. Are you a little bit worried about uh, what you do with the girls settling in? Are they, are they nervous? Chantelle, being older, um, you know, I'm a little bit concerned then how she'd settle. I mean, obviously, um, I'm, I'm the same as her, you know. I, I don't know how it would be me making friends mm. here, because obviously I'll have to get out. It's just handy having the girls, because it gets me out to meet people as well. Sure. Um, so, you know, we're just concerned about the way me and her settle. Well, it's you'll really find nice. you fit in really well here. There is a large population of British people. I think oh, you'll good. fit in really well. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand your accent too. <laughs> oh, that's a good start then. We can just have a conversation now. <laughs> the girls were enjoying the dance class, and Sharon had got some great advice. And as Alan's day came to an end, he had an important question to ask. Don't mind me asking, Luke, what's the wages? About uh, $20 to $35 to $40, depending on the, uh, the skill and the qualifications of the yep. climber. Yep, it's better than back in the UK anyway. Yeah. How does that compare to a sort of yearly total? Say £20,000. Yep. Which, I'm not too sure what that would be, but then out here you're, you're looking at £40,000, so it's double. That was great news. It meant Alan could earn the same as in the UK without having to do 90 hours a week. However, it would mean working for someone else. My decision is going to be Australia. With a great wage and reduced hours, Alan's dream was closer than ever. But there was a long way to go before it became a reality. For the Paytons, one of the big draws of Australia was living by the coast and having a boat. They'd had one in the UK, but a combination of Alan's long working hours and poor weather meant they hardly used it. So we arranged for them to visit a local boat dealer to see what they might be able to afford on their budget of £15,000. Um, this is sort of in the price range that you're looking at, um, and it's seating for six or eight adults inside there. And to give them a taste of the lifestyle, Tim, the owner, agreed to show them what life on the water was all about. Do you want to go any faster, girls? Hey, oh. It seemed this was a lifestyle the whole family could enjoy. I launch my boat off the beach and I get out on the water at six o'clock and you can sit there and it's dead calm and yep. you can yeah. hear the city start to get it kick into life. Oh, this would be the dream, really, wouldn't it? It's so peaceful. Well, it's she's Imogen's even fallen asleep. Is she? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, she, she's enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Imogen might have been tired out, but Chantel and Demi were enjoying their day. I think it's really good to get after the boat. It's fun. We're going a bit faster. Grab hold of any time you like. Yep. So how do you yeah. enjoy that trip then, girls? Good. Is that a good day out? I think I'd like to do it every weekend. Thing is, we'd have to move to Australia to do it, though. Aww. Oh. 
they'd blown away the cobwebs and enjoyed their time on the boat. But owning it would be a big expense, so would it be worth it? Had they been convinced by the Australian lifestyle, it was time to vote. Our vote's going to be Australia. Australia. What did you think, Imogen? Yeah. Even though you slept through it all, you still had a lot of fun, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Good girl, that's the way. To afford to live in Australia, everything depended on the value of the house in South Wales. They'd put a lot of effort into making it a home they loved and were hoping to get around £300,000 for it. Oh, it's raining, as usual. Yeah, it shows how good it is back here now, doesn't it? We sent two estate agents to give their valuations. Lovely size kitchen for the family. House looks mm -hmm. nice, girls. I kind of feel strange going back there. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, this definitely would do it for me. That definitely is the wow factor. It'd be interesting to see what they say at the end of the price. Yeah. And, of course, the lovely uninterrupted views to the back. Oh, yeah, see? Yeah, but look at it out there. You know, I know, I know what you're saying. It's the first thing that gets me down is that way, what? So was it worth £300,000? If you were looking for a quick sale on this marketplace, you would have to keep it below the 250 mark, 250,000. So I would market it at 249. Oh, yeah. I'm not happy with that, yeah. In my opinion, I would place the property on the market at 250,000. Um, with a view of taking an offer. Um, if they were in a hurry and they needed a quick sale, I would put it a little bit below that, around 230,000. No, That's giving it away. Well, exactly, exactly. I was giving it away. With a big question mark hanging over the value of their home, it was crucial the patents found out exactly where their money would be spent. We prepared a comparison of living costs so they could work out where they stood. Let's find out. A moment of truth. Here we go. The monthly bills. OK, so what are we looking at? Mortgage. So. In the Australian one then. That was one, one, oh, one, three. one. So that one's better. There could possibly be payments on for a boat, for you know, repayments for a boat. Gas. Gas and electricity, 160 in Australia. 160, yeah. 150 back home. I thought it'd be more expensive back home. Health and dental insurance, that's something we don't have back home. No, no. get the NHS back home, so. Or school okay. dinners. School dinners, yeah. Almost 50 per year. Wow. Crikey, that is expensive, isn't it? More than double, isn't it? Yeah. The everyday things in Australia, your haircuts, your school trips, that kind of the stuff, school lunches, is, more is expensive. a bit more expensive. As Sharon was planning to work once the girls were settled into school, they included her wages in their calculations. The difference between the two is... Okay. Two, six, eight, eight. Yeah, big difference, isn't it? Oh, that is a big difference. It seems to be taking all the boxes we could live out here in yeah. a 40 hour week. With fewer outgoings but higher wages, they calculated they'd be a massive £2,100 a month better off in Australia. Yep. So that's a big difference, isn't it? Yeah. Alan was desperate to work a more 9 to 5 routine. If they could only afford to do that in Australia, did the figures change everything? It was time to vote on living costs. After working out the cost of living between Australia and the UK, today our vote goes for Australia. Australia. No surprise there then. It had to be, didn't it? Yeah. Key to the move was Sharon feeling she could make new friends and fit in with Aussie life. So they went to see Kylie Rowan, who Sharon met in the dance class, with her family and their ponies. Although they hadn't ridden much before, Imogen was keen to give it a go. For Sharon, it was a chance to see a whole different side to Australian living. So would the properties be cheaper out in this area yeah. then? The get... further out from town, generally, though, you get, you get more land. Uh, uh -huh. so. I'd feel uh, quite at home here, because I see with the hills and at home mm. it's quite hilly and green. With Alan hoping to work less, Sharon could see a lifestyle that would bring them all closer. You know, it makes you get together as a family, do it, doesn't it? Being out here, there's so much to do. The paintings were impressed, but now they had some tough choices to make. Chattel's loving it. Cool or horse? 
It looked like mum and dad were going to have a tricky time pleasing all their daughters. And they still had to consider the heartache of leaving everyone back in the UK. The Paytons decided to watch some messages from their friends and family with the girls to see how they felt about leaving their home. Hi, Alan. Hi, Sharon. Who's there? Hello to the girls. Yeah, how are my beautiful granddaughters? Hi, Alan. Sharon, Chantel, Demi and Imogen. Alan is... Alan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a hard worker. Chantel is a, a very quiet, reserved child. Demi is more outgoing and a very loving child. She'll think nothing of coming up and just saying... I love you. Will she? Yeah. She goes, I love you and honey, and she gives a kiss and a hug, so then Imogen then just follows whatever Demi does. I think it's really hard for Chantal because um, it's like the other side of the world and um, all everybody's over in this country. Uh, I try not to think about it too much because it does upset me. I know people say you can talk on the phone, you can get a webcam from Australia and all that, but so there's nothing so that can make same. up for her. The arms around your neck and hugging and the kissing. And that's what I miss the most, I think. That. Oh, God. And the funny little things that come out from there. Yes. We've always wanted to be grandparents. <laughs> They're so close as well, and... Um, <sighs> There's nothing there to change it, is there? You, you, but... They'd be devastated. Give her five. <laughs> That's the hardest bit, girl, so... <laughs> I thought we weren't all going to cry. <laughs> huh? Oh, wow. Huh? Well, a bit of an impact, didn't it? The messages brought home just how much their leaving would affect everyone. I know they'd never get over it, and it'll be just as hard for them as it is for me and the rest of us to come out here. I think it was nice to see them say things like that about me because Every day I see them in school and on the weekends they usually come over and I don't know what it'll be like to be without them. <laughs> it was very sad. This is the biggest decision we'll ever have to make, you know. You won't make one as big as this. But time had run out to make up their minds. The Paytons had been through a very emotional week. They'd found a place to call home, a lifestyle they loved and made good friends easily. But constantly hanging over them was the pain of being so far from loved ones. For Chantel, it was a decision she didn't want to face. Back home, I've been with my friends since we've started school. And when I'm over here, I've only got my mother, father and two sisters. I wish that I didn't have to make such a big decision. But Alan and Sharon were under huge pressure to get this right. Their future and happiness depended on their final choice. I don't know where we're going to go from there because I'm working things out. There's no way I'm carrying on working the way I am anymore. I've had absolutely enough of it. I mean, obviously, I'm worried and concerned that I might make the wrong choice. If my final vote turned out to be um, that I wanted to stay in the UK, then Ireland would be absolutely devastated. But obviously, if my vote went for Australia, then that would be the icing on the cake for him. You know, I think he'd love me forever for that. With so much resting on the crucial vote, could they really turn their backs on their life in South Wales 
and moved to Australia to follow Alan's dream. This has been my dream. My goal was to get out here and to see what it's like. We've met some really fabulous people and today our vote goes for... Australia! Australia. Oh! <laughs> they all vote for home. You surprised me, kids. I didn't see that coming. Not about your vote. I knew you'd be convinced. Did you? Yeah. I wasn't sure about Chantelle, but no. I thought the other two might have gone for Australia. I think I've got to go back now and redo my cost of living because it looks like I'm going to have to buy a pool, a boat and a pony <laughs> to get the kids out here. <laughs> what do you think, kids? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Their week in Australia showed the Paytons everything they could gain and lose by moving down under. With their future in the balance, what happened next? So, one year after their trip, had Alan, Sharon, Chantel, Demi and Imogen made the move to Australia? No. When we caught up with the Paytons, they were still in the UK. However, that was all about to change very soon. We'd go into the airport on Monday and we'd be moving to Australia. We decided to move to Adelaide. The reason we chose Adelaide, because um, when I went there, it felt very much like home. Um, I mean, at the time, I remember looking at the views and you could see the hills. And, I mean, there was work there for Alan as well. Um, you know, that's where the work was taking him. I went and found a company and I had a job offer there and then. The job's been kept open for a whole year now. Um, they've actually been pushing, pushing for me to hurry up and get out there. It's quite a good position I'm going to have as well. Alan's job offer meant the move could finally happen. The main hurdle was their home, which had been valued a lot lower than they'd hoped. We've decided to keep the house now and rent it out. It's, the market has gone terrible now, so we'd be losing about £30,000 if we were to sell it at the moment. But obviously nothing's even selling. The house pays for itself, really, when you've got tenants in here. Although they still had their concerns, Sharon and Alan were convinced about the decision they'd made. It's going to probably is one of the biggest gamblers we're going to take in our life, but I'd rather try it than stay here and in maybe five, ten years' time, look back and think, I wish we had, and have regrets. So, regrets are no good. So, it's, I think it's worth a gamble. I think what I am leaving is a lot of good memories. And those are something that will always be with us. I just feel, you know, it's time to move on. Um, no, I think there's a new adventure out there for us. And one short week later, they were heading off to their new life on the other side of the world. Come on, girls. Can anybody see our flight? Where is it then? Going to Singapore, yeah? And then from Singapore to... Adelaide! Yes, yeah. Ten. Ten bags. Ten. Definitely no going back now, is it? My mum... Uh, today was really bad, wasn't she, Chantelle? Yeah. She was really bad today. Um, but I sent her a text earlier on saying that each day will get easier and each day is a day closer to seeing us again. Then finally, after months of planning, there was no turning back. The Paytons were off to find their dream life 10,000 miles away in Australia. We caught up with them six months later in their final destination of Adelaide. They're renting a house in the suburb of Athelston, just seven miles from the city centre. But has it all been plain sailing? It's been hectic, to be honest with you. But I mean, we've, we've made it that way, haven't we? Because we arrived in the winter, we wanted, I mean, we are two weeks into spring now. We yeah. wanted everything done so we can sit and enjoy what we came here for. But it's been, no, it's been not easy, has it? Renting a house here was a big problem because we weren't here in the, U you know, we're in the UK, they didn't want to know us, we didn't have employment here, things like that, but we stumbled across this one, 
sent all the necessary forms off and they, they, we had, they had came back and said, yeah, you can have it, but you've got to have it now. So we actually paid for this for about six weeks before, before, we, came out. before we came out, yeah, we were paying for it. I loved my house back in the UK, but I mean, I love the house here and I just feel that a house is four walls and you make it a home. You've changed your mind a bit about the house then. Yeah, well, like you I wanted say, to bring it here, and now you're I saying know. it's just four walls now. <laughs> but so. no, I mean it's it is. I've realised that it's a house is what you you know the home is. You make it a home. Sharon may be happy with four walls, but for a while that's all they had. Being without our furniture for the first five six, five, six, five, weeks, six yeah. weeks, you know that made it difficult. Basically, we lived on uh, patio furniture. By the time we left the UK and we actually got it delivered to the front door was about 13 weeks. Yeah, it was hard. And having got their belongings, the patrons seem pretty happy with where they've landed. Athelstan is a lovely suburb. Um, it's a friendly suburb. We've got um, all the local shops. Um, we've got parks all around you. You've got the wildlife around. It's, it's a really nice suburb. There's a lot around here for us to do. It's just the outdoor life, isn't it? Yeah. You know, there's a lot that we haven't... I mean, we've only been here five months, so we haven't really explored a lot yet. No. We've been busy just getting ourselves settled, but there's so much to explore now, and, you know, over the next year, we're going to find out a lot more beneficial things for us. Oh, wow. 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 oh look. It's, it's what I wanted in life now, is just to be relaxed. You know, it's not as fast moving as some of the other places in Australia. It's um, quite laid back and it's pretty old fashioned compared to the rest of Australia as well, which is, which is nice to me. That's true Aussie style. Sharon and Alan may have uprooted their family and moved to the other side of the world. They all seem to have settled quickly into familiar routines. Alan has landed just the job he wanted as a tree surgeon working for someone else rather than being the boss. And Sharon has found work as an ophthalmologist in a local eye clinic. I work in a private eye clinic, which I love, because I worked in eyes in the UK about nine, ten years ago. So to be back into the, that environment is, is really good. Although Alan was the driving force behind this move, the shoe was on the other foot after their trial week. I was very surprised with Sharon after we'd been out here. Um, she was pushing for it more than me. I kind of knew that, you know, that it'll come, the paper process, the visas, all that kind of stuff, but she'd, you know, when we'd have all the wet weather, she'd keep saying, oh, come on, when's this going to come through? Are we ever going to get there? So I think the visit here definitely convinced Sharon anyway that it was the right move. It was just that feeling that I just want to get there now. I just want to be out there and I just want to start living the dream that we've been looking forward to and been wanting uh, for a long time. So, yeah, we, we just couldn't wait to get out here. We were really sad and, you know, for what, leaving friends and family behind. Um, again, the excitement took over because we knew what we were coming out to. We knew what to expect when we got here. But, it, you know, it's still, it was still sad saying goodbye to everybody. Really emotional. For Sharon, the big hurdle to emigrating was leaving the rest of her family in the UK, and it hasn't been easy. The worst part was saying goodbye to my granddad, because I knew that was probably the last goodbye for him. Um, but he was so happy for us, you know, he was, he was wishing us well and he wanted us to go and he was saying, good on you for doing it and you're brave and this. So, so that was really difficult. Um, but I'm saying goodbye to my parents. I mean, my mum and dad wanted to come to the airport, but I refused. I didn't want them there because I knew, I, you know, we couldn't handle it. They couldn't and we couldn't and I don't think it would be fair on the girls either, so we said our goodbyes at home and now I can still picture them in their home and they can still picture us in a village where we were brought up, so, so yeah, it was really hard. But despite the heartache, Adelaide has given Sharon and Alan the family life they could only dream of in the UK. The lifestyle here is better. Um, I don't feel 
like a single parent anymore because Alan now is employed, he's working for a company, so it's basically like nine to five, Monday to Friday, so we have got the weekends together and it, we do have more quality family time that we can go and do our things. The family side of things has been good, you know, I've, I've interacting with the kids a lot more, you know, we go out and play ball, we've got great places around the house to go to, we go to the park. Our main dream that we wanted to do was to buy a boat and we've just now done that, so, you know, that's what we're going to look forward to now is uh, I've done my boat licence every week, so start getting out on that now every weekend. I think things have changed quite a lot for Alan because um, he used to work so many hours in the UK and he's not working as much now. Um, he's not as grumpy because <laughs> they say he was so tired working all those hours. So that's made a, made a big difference for him and he's got more time to spend with the children. I probably see them more in one night now than I you know, did in a whole week at some point. And they can really see the difference it's made on Chantelle, Demi and Imogen. The thing I notice a difference with the kids now is as soon as we get home, they want to go out and play on their bikes. Whereas in the UK, it was always in the house watching TV, computer games and everything, but they always want to be outside now and doing stuff. And before, we used to nag them to get out, but they're nagging us to get out now. So, yeah, they're adapting well to it. At the end of their trial week, all three girls voted for the UK. Chantel was particularly worried about leaving her friends behind. So how do you feel after being here for the six months? Are you happy? You settled in? Yeah, I'm happy. I feel quite settled in. And you've had good new friends? Loads. Yeah? Yeah. And are you missing your friends back home? Yeah, but I still keep in touch with them. Like emails and writing to each other. I think they're probably missing you too. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you had the flag now, would it be Australia or UK? Australia. Yay! <laughs> That's the result. As they enjoy a traditional Australian afternoon around the barbie with their friends, it's safe to say living down under suits the patents. Though it looks like Alan's got a long way to go before he can call himself a proper Aussie. <laughs> oh, nice one, Alan. <laughs> I think you need to do a few more barbecues to get a hold of this, <laughs> to get the hang of it. Takes you about two years to learn how to barbecue properly. <laughs> <laughs> A good tradesman never blames his tools, but obviously the, you know, the error was within the barbecue here. You know? Moving to a new country is never easy, and after a tough start, it looks as if the patents are settling into their lives down under. And with everyone finally getting time together, it's a big step to the future they've dreamt of. We wish them the very best of luck. Next up today on BBC One, buyers with ambitious plans on homes under the hammer.